In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make floating particles for tool bag for a lighting environment. And we're going to use Maya and the MASH tool set to generate those particles to get the, f uh, the effect of floating uh, dust or particles in the scene. And you can see the lighting setup that I have here, something that has moonlight with some volumetric light coming into the scene. And it everything's dialed in inside a tool bag. Now we just have to go and generate the particles uh, inside of Maya to bring it. So let's open up Maya. And inside of Maya, I have the scene kind of in its uh, raw state model out. And what we're going to do is use this for to figure out how big our particle field that we're going to make is going to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of zoom back out a little bit. And you can see the outer bounding box, the light blocker that we're using uh, for tool bag is what this is right here. And we're just going to generate the particle system kind of outside and then we'll move it in once we start dialing it in. So to get something started, we're going to start with a plane. So I'm going to come up to poly modeling, plane, and it should drop a polygon onto the grid here. You can see it right here. I'm going to hit the F key to frame up on it. And this is way too much geometry. We want to keep it low poly because we're going to generate a lot of floating particles. So let's go to the attribute or the channel box, go to the inputs and the plane attributes here in the history. So we'll go to inputs and I'll just set this the subdivisions, the width and the height to two. And that should be good enough for what we need. And then I'm gonna start rounding out the corners here. So I'm gonna to go to vertex mode and just select the corners and then go to the scale tool and just kind of round it out right there. So this is really good. This will keep the poly count really low and still give us the shape that we want. And I'm gonna go back to object mode and I'm going to duplicate this and I'm going to go to rotate and hold the J key and I'm going to just kind of incrementally move it so it's standing straight up. So we've got, you know, one going down across the Y, the X, and then we want the one to go to in the Z direction. So we'll duplicate it again, hold the J key and then rotate it and there we go. So again, this is all UV'd. If you want to actually want to make a transparent ping texture to actually texture um, a simple um, white dot for your particle, you could do that. But for our purposes, this uh, simple geometric uh, object is going to give us really good uh, angles from every side that this is a spherical dust particle. All right, so once we've done this, we're going to select all three of them, and then we're going to shift and right click, and we're just gonna hit combine, or you can come up to the top and go to mesh and combine up here. And then that's gonna come in here, combine all this into one object. We're gonna delete the history on that, and I'm gonna rename this dust one. All right. So that's just our first dust particle right here. And again, it's all UV'd if you need it to UV it. Now, what we're going to do is uh, add a new shader to it. So I'm going to right click on it, say new material. And I'm just going to do a simple Lambert. And this Lambert, I'm going to name it dust. shader. So when we export this out as an FBX or a limbic cache file, it's already got a shader associated with it, which will make it really handy. So that's what we're going to do here. All right, that looks good. Uh, I will add a little bit of a hint of blue to it just to help uh, see it a little bit better in the scene as we generate the particle field. All right, I'm going to select this object and I'm going to go and use the mash tool set. So to find it, 
sometimes it's along the top here uh, but you do have to go to a different uh, tool set inside of Maya so if I go up to or top left corner here go to modeling and go to via uh, FX and once we go to FX we'll change the menu set we want to use the mash so we're going to go in here select mash make sure your piece of geometry is selected and then say create mash network and then this will start creating a waiter node which right here you can see and this waiter node has all the different things that you can do with the mash network it also creates a mash distribution node which basically as you can see distributes the amount of instances of the geometry that I first created so right now number of points I have set to 10 I can increase this to more I can even change the distribution type to radial or spherical and I can even attach it to a mesh but what I want is going to be grid and in this grid I'm gonna set some parameters again these are all based off the Maya units and inside these sliders so what you want to do is you want to go to the distance node here you know this is a very large scene you can see this is quite big so we need to use some big numbers and again this will vary depending on the scene you have and how big these numbers need to be so for me I'm just gonna already kind of went through and set some numbers for for me So let's see if this is a good starting point. You can kind of see it sitting out here, but I need more. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go bash through that mash distribution. And I'm going to come over here and go to the grid X, Y, and Z. And here I'm going to increase those numbers to about 7 for the X, 7 for the Y, and then 7 for the Z. There we go. Now you can really see that particle field that we generated. That looks pretty good. I could, I mean, on the Y, could come just a little bit smaller. About 150, or 250. And then maybe a little bit bigger on the Z. That looks pretty good there. And then the X. We'll do another 500. There we go. Okay. So you can, now it's built this you know nice grid pattern, as you can see, of particles. Now we need to randomize this particle field. So what we're going to do is going to go back to the waiter node. So right here mash one we're gonna come in here and there's lots of different uh, things you can play with you can play with some dynamics um, you can play with uh, some springs you can play with quite a bit of stuff in here and what I want to do is I want to do the random node so this is just gonna randomize uh, give us control on randomizing the position rotation and scale so I'm gonna click on it and it's gonna give me this little menu and say add random node now let's start randomizing these particles I'm just going to zoom in a little bit more so we can actually see what we're doing here and I can randomize the X Y and Z position so that's doing pretty good but it's not enough I can still see kind of that grid pattern in there so we have to overdrive it so I'm gonna go to like the Z and let's just overdrive this by, oh, let's do 50. Ah, that looks a lot better already. And let's do like 20 for the Y. And, and next looks pretty good. Yeah, I like that. So sometimes you have to overdrive these values. And then the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, if I can zoom in on one of these guys, there we go, and I'm going to randomize the rotation, if 
for these objects and then I can randomize the scale a little bit but if I do each X Y and Z kind of elongates the particle what I want to do is I want to scale uh, uniformly across all three axes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on uniform scale right here at the bottom. And it basically kind of disables the Y and the Z. Only the X is now something that can use. And you can see I can randomize the scale of the particles. So some are getting bigger and some are getting smaller and some are in the middle. Just like that. That looks pretty good. All right. So I've gone in there and I've randomized my particle field with the scale, rotation, and position. Looks good. Now, let's add some movement to this field here. So I'm going to go back to the waiter node. So I'm just going to hit the mash one. And I'm going to use the signal node. And again, this is just going to use a procedural uh, noise to actually generate movement for our particles. So I'm just going to right click on that or left click on that and just go add signal and by default it adds a 4D no noise. And if I go down to my time slider I want to make sure I'm at uh, 200 frames here. I'm going to hit the play and you can see if I hit play it's kind of making the particles go up and down. And again, that's using a procedural noise to do that. So what we can do is we can play with that a little bit more. So I'm going to go to position and play with the position X and the position Y and give it a little bit more movement. I, can, I th think we can overdrive these. So if I do 50, yeah, see that? I want it to move a little bit more on the Y going up and down. So let's do 50 on that. There we go. Let's do less on the X. So I'll change that to like 15 maybe. So it's going, they're going up and down more. That's looking pretty good. And then I can randomize a little bit of the rotations. That's going pretty good. And then I can play with the, down here, I can play with the, uh, some other settings. I can play with the scale, which is going to randomize the scale if I want. But I don't want to do that too much. Uh, what I do want to do is I want to see and play with different uh, signal types. So right now it's doing the 4D. Let's do looping noise. That goes really slow. Let's uh, play with the functional brownie motion. Well, that's kind of cool. And then there's the trigonometry, which is basically almost going in like a huge loop circle, but I kind of like it. It's kind of cool. It's good movement there. Now I can come down to the trigonometry settings and play with the step amount. I can play with the scale of the noise and then the time I can slow it down so this time scale I can make it crawl or speed it up depending on how I want it so I want it to relatively go pretty slow that's that's looking pretty good. I like that. Again, you don't have to have it exactly in my settings. You can go in there and change it up. Let's go just a little slower. There we go. Yeah. Looking good, looking good. All right. So I've added some movement to my particles. Now it's time to actually start getting this geometry or this particle field into actual geometry 
to actually bring into Toolbag because right now these are just instances in the MASH network uh, inside of Maya. This is not true geometry at the moment. So I'm going to hit stop and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure I have this object selected so it's going to be the MASH repo mesh right here in the outliner. I'm going to come up to MASH up here at the top. I'm going to go to utilities. I'm going to rip this menu off so I'm going to click on the top here. And what I want to do is I want to go to this bottom section of the menu here. And by doing this I'm going to switch the MASH network to geometry type. So I'm going to hit this and it's going to ask me for the MASH waiter node. So i got to make sure I select this in the outliner right here. I'll select that. And then I'll go to switch MASH to generator chart. So this is going to turn it into geometry. So now it's just switched it to geometry. and actually made an instancer. So it's still not objects. It's an instancer. It's, so it's, it's, it's one step closer. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rename this. I'm just going to call this uh, Dust. So that instancer in the outliner, I'm just going to name this Dust 1. Or I think I called the other one Dust 1. This I'll call Dust, dust underscore. That's what I'll call it. There we go. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to start baking out your particle animation.